We are so honored to be joined by two NASA astronauts that have just gotten back from space. Anne McLean and Nick Hager here, and both were on the International Space Station. You went at different times, but you were training in the same 2013 astronaut class. Let me start out by asking you the training. Does it really prepare you for going to space? 100%. It, uh, you know, we trained, we were selected in 2013, uh, we trained for generic astronaut skills for about two years, we trained for this speci specific mission for about two years, and it was really amazing to arrive at the International Space Station, this, this vehicle that is so far off of our Earth, and it feel like a home. It was so familiar to us when we got there. Nick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did our first spacewalk together, and we spent so much time on the ground training underwater in our neutral buoyancy lab that when we were outside and it was dark, I found myself looking for the bubbles in the water. It felt so familiar. Wow. What about zero gravity? Is it, does it feel like you thought it would feel like? You know, I didn't have a good idea of what it was going to feel like and what it, what I, the way I describe it, it kind of, it was the first time you felt like nothing, right, on your whole body. Like mm -hmm. normally we're standing or we're sitting or we're laying down. You have some force on your body somewhere. And when you float, you're like, wow, I don't feel anything from head to toe. And working in microgravity, it is, I say, everything's better when, when you're floating. I mean, it, you kind of become a, the kid in the candy store. It's just, it's exciting to be able to work in that environment. Yeah, floating for seven months, flying around the station is just this amazing feeling. Almost like you're in a dream. Oh, yeah. Uh, then let me ask you, when you're, you're on your way to the International Space Station, you're looking back at Earth, what kind of goes through your mind. What goes through your mind? Yeah, that's definitely a journey that, that you'll never forget. Um, so, you know, it only takes about nine minutes to get to orbit. So from the time you see all the fire on the launch pad to when we we're floating in space, about nine minutes. It's a really quick transition. And then uh, I remember looking out the window for the first time and seeing a sunrise come across the curvature of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't actually even know what I was seeing at first. And then when I realized I was looking at half of our Earth out the window and you realize I am in outer space, I'm no longer on the planet. Uh, it's, it's so hard to describe. Let me ask you about those spacewalks a little mm -hmm. bit more. Do you get nervous? Like, I'm not in the International Space Station anymore. Are you nervous at all when you do it? Or is it just like clockwork, all of the training? We spend so much time training and preparing for the mission. Uh, to be able to do that spacewalk, you get really focused on the, the task at hand. But I have to be honest with you, you know, we're human, right? So all those emotions, probably the one that was most prominent was, you know, they got this whole team on the ground that's supporting us. I've got my crewmate there. I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want to make a mistake. That's the thing that's going through your mind. We have some questions from some DC public school students. Mm -hmm. They had some questions about what it's like being an astronaut. So we're going to play those now. Good morning, everybody. We've been talking all about astronauts and what astronauts do. Remember, astronauts are a community worker. Excellent job. Astronauts are community workers. So today we're going to have a special surprise. We're going to get to talk to some astronauts. <gasps> Whoa. Hmm. Does anybody have some questions for the astronauts? <sighs> Savannah, what's your question? What do astronauts eat? Mmm, that's a good question, Savannah. Does anybody else have a question for the astronauts? <gasps> Eric, what's your question? What do you wear in outer space? Oh, that's a great question, Eric. Does anybody else have a question? Hmm, <gasps> Jaliah, what's your question? How do you get to outer space? Whoa, those are some pretty fantastic questions from our friends at Wheelie Education Campus. Say bye. Bye. You got to love the bright minds of the future, right? So we, we had a couple of questions there. Savannah was asking, what do you eat in space? Can you describe that? Sure, it's, you know, eating in, in space is pretty fun. You know, we definitely play with our food. Uh, so. Uh, we eat a couple different kinds of food, so it's really uh, expensive to launch heavy items into space, and so a lot of our food comes dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And so almost anything you can think of that you can order at a restaurant, we have on the space station. We have a huge variety. We have over 200 types of food on the space station that we can have every day. 
And then uh, anytime we get a cargo vehicle up, we'll get a special treat like fresh fruit. And so I think everybody has their, their favorite uh, mm -hmm. food, but uh, I think the common theme is that everybody likes to float their food and, you know, kind of catch it off a fork while it's floating and it never gets So old. you play with your food probably 100%. just like some of them do in school. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. We encourage kids to do the same. Okay. Nick, um, Eric was asking to describe what you wear in outer space. So how is it safe for you to be in less than ideal atmosphere like we have on Earth mm -hmm. and be safe? Can you describe that to him? Yeah, so inside the space station, we maintain an atmosphere that's very similar to what, we're, what we have right now. And so it's comfortable. We wear t-shirts and pants and, you know, the, the fun thing is we wear socks. We don't need to wear shoes. Um, uh, it, I think another interesting aspect of what we wear is that because everything floats up there, we don't have a way to wash our clothes. So we wear them for a period of time and then we have to throw them away and pull out new clothes. And so you start the mission with this locker full of clothes and you can kind of count the duration of your mission as all your clothes go away. Oh, wow. Okay, last question. Jelia was asking, how do you get to space? Can you talk about that? Yeah, so we launch on a rocket. Um, there's lots of different types of rockets. The one that we uh, launched on was called the Soyuz. We sit on the launch pad. Uh, it's this really tall rocket. It takes only about nine minutes to get to orbit, and we rockets have stages, and so it's like three different portions of the rocket have different engines, and so we launch up to space. We go about, yeah, eight, eight minutes and 48 seconds to get up to orbit, mm -hmm. and then the space station is actually only like 250 miles above the surface of the Earth, and so we then spend the next five hours chasing the space station until we can softly dock to it. Very good. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to answer all these questions for our young, bright minds at DC Public Schools. And McClay, Nick Haig, thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you. Thank you.